Welcome Climate Viewers, my name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com, ClimateViewer.org, and WeatherModificationHistory.com. Tonight we're going to have to punk another meteorologist. Um, <coughs> well, it appears that Eric Sorensen from WQAD has decided to pick a fight and mock people over chemtrails versus contrails. And, you know, I don't take kindly to mockery and that sort of thing. So let's just, let's just hear it in his words. It's time for an urgent breaking news update. That right there, contrails. See, right there, jet airplanes, very cold up there. The heat from the airplane engine is condensation in the air. It's creating clouds. So right here, once again, that, contrails, not chemicals, contrails. Well, I mean, that was pretty scientific. Um, I think he pretty much summoned that up well. So, uh, thanks for that update, uh, Eric. It's time you're, for... You're, um, you really nailed it um, for me. I mean, case closed. We might as well wrap this video up. Um, but unfortunately for you... Um, we're going to have to give you a, a harsh little spanking. So, although, you know, he, you know, this is obviously antagonism. Um, you know, it's, it's meant to, to get hits. It's, it's meant to, you know, inflame people. Um, what he doesn't realize is, and, and you can check out all my work. It's at climateviewer.com open source free of charge um support me monthly on patreon give a one-time donation on paypal but regardless um this article is get out of my way one of the first articles i wrote chemtrails and the lies between the lines now as many of you know um i wrote this in 2013 I've always rode the fence. I, you know, I never. I was told there's always two sides to one, two sides to a story, and in the middle lies the truth. So what I did was, you know, kind of just go through what you know people think about chemtrails and contrails and soot, and how you know it's more than just condensation. Um, you know, this is what ideal combustion looks like. This is what it actually ends up turning out. And of course, soot affects clouds, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I go all the way to the end here talking about creepy stuff geoengineers say, what the military has to say about it. And the bottom line is, if scientists are still scratching their head, then why are you so damn confident? And you can look at the, the research on just this very first paper I wrote. And you'll see that, you know, um, potential cloud effects important, but currently unknown. Talking about carbon black soot. Um, and the list goes on and on. Well understood, not well understood, not understood at all. Um, you know, so generally speaking, this was 2008. The scientists barely understand the process of cloud formation. Um, yet this prick's coming off talking about chemtrails don't exist. These are all contrails. And what he's talking about really is slave speak. Now, you know, just we did a couple of general polls of meteorologists. And you could check them out. Meteorologists respond to weather modification history part one and part two. Um, and you'll realize that, you know, generally speaking, meteorologists don't know you know jack about weather modification and they certainly don't understand anything more than what they're told about contrails and chemtrails and the reason for this is because of something called slave speak and i you know i really i brought this up briefly in a video previously but it goes like this um yeah, ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Language creates spooks that get into our head and hypnotize us. It's hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. And the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. 
But most importantly, Carl Sagan said it best. One of the saddest lessons of history is this. If we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. We're no longer interested in finding out the truth. The bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've been taken. Once you give a charlatan power over you, you almost never get it back. So the purpose of this Anatomy of Slave Speak article is that, you know, language has a very powerful effect on our ability to communicate and obviously to, to form, you know, ideas. And, and that's really what it comes down to with chemtrails versus contrails. That individuals, you know, want to attribute their ideologies to these high-level descriptors, both of which are high-level descriptors. And I'll put it to you simply like this. If a scientist and a, a chemtrail believer walk outside, both of them point at the sky, and the scientist looks up and he says, contrail. And then the other guy points at the sky and he says, chemtrail. They are both right. Now, unfortunately for most people, you won't understand that. That's why I suggest you read the anatomy of slave speak. But basically, it comes boils down to this. High-level descriptors have different meanings to different people. And for me, chemtrails does not mean global depopulation agenda. It means trail of chemicals. Very basic. Um, and the trail of chemicals are what water condensates on. So a contrail is supposed to mean condensation trail. So to all the scientists who say condensation trail, I look them in the eye and I say, condensating on what? That's the most important question. Um, and that's rarely ever spoken about because, you know, they want to leave it at contrails, do, you know, are the thing and chemtrails do not exist. Because, you know, as Eric Sorensen, um, the, the jerk that he is, um, he's making a mockery of a very serious situation by, you know, using slave speak. And saying that basically anybody that uses the word chemtrail obviously believes that it's a secret government program to depopulate the planet. When in fact, um, the majority of people don't believe that. The majority of people who use the word chemtrails now would rather refer to it as geoengineering, which is a little more accurate. Um, because these clouds are geoengineering the planet. They are blocking sunlight. Um, they're not so much doing solar radiation management as they are doing earth radiation management. They are putting a blanket over the planet that traps heat. Um, but regardless, you know, none of this is being talked about seriously. So let's talk about it seriously. Um, back in, uh, 2014, I put this article up, Earth Justice Sues EPA Over Flight Pollution. And basically, in a statement, they said, if the agency finds airline emissions to be a risk to public health or the environment, it will begin the process of crafting rules and regulations. So me being, you know, the instigator that I am, um, I called the EPA and I said, I would like to show up for this hearing. And they said, well, we're not actually going to have a hearing and you're the only person on the planet who has said you wanted to show up and uh, maybe you could just submit that in writing. I said, hell no. So I did a GoFundMe, <laughs> help Jim Lee attend EPA hearing. And uh, you can see the video of that here. I, meet, I met my goal, I went up to DC and uh, we recorded the whole thing. Now, interestingly enough, um, the trolls came out in force, but this was by design. So what I did was I went to Metabunk, um, for those who aren't familiar with Metabunk, Mick West, um, he runs a forum called metabunk.org and they debunk chemtrail stuff. So what I did was I took my speech that I was going to give at the EPA hearing and I gave it to Metabunk and I said, guys, here's my speech. I'm about to give this at an EPA hearing. Tell me where I'm wrong they could not debunk one line in the entire speech. 
boom. So I knew I was on the money. Um, but I, you know, and, you know, of course they did what all trolls do. They just resorted to per personal attacks. So then I went to the evil side of debunking. Chemtrails are killing us, also known as Kaku, C-A-K-U. Um, this is a group of gang stalkers on Facebook. They hijack, hijack Facebook pages uh, like Chemtrails, Depopulation, and Agenda 21 is one of their hijack groups. Um, the International Chemtrail Association is another one of their parody groups. But regardless, their main group is called Chemtrails Are Killing Us. So I went to their group and did the same thing. I said, here's my speech. I'm going to the EPA hearing. Debunk it. I dare you. Um, and of course, they couldn't debunk it either. You know, and they've got a group of 3,000 members that tried desperately to, you know, shoot holes in the arguments, but could not. So I felt pretty proud of that. And that's where this uh, monumentally famous uh, image comes from. Matt Bornong, what a name, uh, is from Kaku, and he keeps posting this photo everywhere. And this is from a conversation that was had before the hearing. So I went and I posted my, my speech to the EPA and, you know, they went through and, you know, personal attack after personal attack. The, the conversation went 541 comments, but this is the one that sticks out for them. So to recap, I don't believe chemtrails are killing us. And I got money from chemtrail believers to go to a hearing about aviation CO2. At worst, I'm better at punking chemtards than you. At best, I'm turning lunatics into activists or they quit, asked Dominique from ChemChasers.com. Deleted his whole website and Facebook page after a three-hour phone call with me, so you don't know anything about me. Chill out. Um, and, you know, then he posts a couple extra little photos from this discussion, and they're out of order here, but, you know, I say chemtrails or SEO candy. Because at the end of the day, Nobody's Googling contrails or contrail um, aviation environmental pollution. People Google chemtrails. So if you want to reach out to people who are concerned about clouds in the sky coming from planes, you got to use the word chemtrails. But if you're talking to scientists, you got to use the word contrails. Um, that's slave speak. I mean, that's all slave speak. So regardless, um, you know, I go on and I show them my chemtrails and the lies between the lines, the commercial aviation uh, alternative fuels initiative, um, biofuels could not help climate change. You can see part of the discussion here. Um, I talk about the aviation environmental design toolkit and the aviation climate change research initiative. Well, I actually interviewed the head of the aviation climate change research initiative, not once, not twice, but three times. Um, and you know, none of that really gets passed around. The only thing that gets passed around, of course, is this, you know, I don't believe in chemtrails are killing us. And let me be clear on that. Um, I, you know, for the most part, I do not believe that chemtrails are a global depopulation agenda, you know, intentionally to spray and kill everybody on the planet. It doesn't make sense. I mean, how are, you know, the rich not going to breathe the same air that we're breathing? Um, so that, that never made sense to me. I mean, just on its face, you know what I and, and you know my wife tried to say well you know they do eat better they've got better food they've got air filters you know yada yada but at the end of the day um you know they're breathing the same air as us so what do they all get inoculated from whatever's in the chemtrails and you know the global illuminati bohemian grove trilateral commission club of rome all these guys just hand out vaccines for what's in the chemtrails Hey, man, that's a possibility, but it's a very slim one. So I try to keep it real. And I don't believe that, you know, it's a global depopulation agenda. I believe that 90% of what we're seeing is pollution. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't secret government programs to geoengineer the planet. I will cover that before the end of this video. And I do believe that that is occurring. It's, in, it's coming from the United States Air Force, Navy, and the CIA. I say so very specifically. 
regardless, um, I did give my speech at the EPA hearing. You can read it in entirety um, on climateviewer.com, my speech to the EPA about flight pollution. And I say that everything in this word for word to this day is still 110% um, legit. But before I, I'm going to play this, I'm going to play what I said at the EPA speech. But back to this, this, you know, prick, Eric Sorensen, you know, it comes down to really discussing, you know, with the public in a, in a meaningful way, what's going on. And that's what I did when I interviewed Dr. Rangasai Halthori from the Federal Aviation Administration's Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative. And here's his response, and I, I think you guys might enjoy it. My point is this. How come when you've got the public calling for, you know, all these agencies saying, chemtrail this, chemtrail that, what the heck, what the heck? Why is the, because I just listened to all of Madison State's, why is the standard response from all the agencies nothing to see here when billions of dollars are being spent at the national labs to figure out how contrails turn into contrail cirrus? They still don't know today. I read June 2013. They don't know. Running it at um, the national labs. This has been going on for years. You guys this started doing study, flights I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't get your punchline. So, so what is the why is it that we are not telling why, people? Okay, what, what, what do you let, mean? let me simplify uh -huh. it. When when the public calls and says, "What's up with the chemtrails in the sky?" Why is the response always "There's nothing to see" and not "We're trying to figure that out"? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, you do, if since you, I think perhaps I'm I'm guessing now, perhaps the because of the way you formed the question, when you say chemtrail, all right. I know. The moment you say I know. That, the moment you say that, you turn people off, uh, scientists off, because there is no such thing. Yeah, but we didn't create. Yes, there is. But we didn't create the term. The Air Force did. The Department of Defense it, did. It, I, but let's be let's be real. It's it's. Yeah. We're talking about mm -hmm. slang, and you guys are. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying you guys. I'm saying that the standard mm -hmm. response seems to be, oh, they mm -hmm. said slang. Don't be real with them. Now, you're supposed to be, you know, the sign of true intelligence is to be able to talk to anybody on their level. So if somebody comes to you and says, chemtrail, you know, you should be I able agree. to explain to them, A, these are contrails. They have become persistent contrails in the recent years know, because of all of the additives. Do you agree? That, you, you could, do, say, do you you could probably that? use a different nomenclature, and, and I agree still too. one could address that. Yeah, that is true. I agree. Yeah. So, this is the head of the FAA's Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative. Okay, well, so who, who regulates the additives? He agrees that they are failing miserably at discussing this. That yes, it is internet slang for planes making clouds, and that they fail miserably at this. And and you know that's why you've got. These jackasses like um, Eric Sorensen over here, you know, just basically doing, you know, a mockery video of people instead of being realistic about it. Because instead of being genuine and saying, look, I understand we're using different terminology and I understand we don't totally agree, um, I could at least, you know, meet you on your level and say, um, well, you know, this is this is a serious problem. Maybe I should, you know, be serious about my answer. And that's that's where the real, you know, screwball occurs. So regardless, um, you know, I moved along, you know, like understanding that chemtrails and contrails in my book are the exact same thing. Um, yeah, that being said, not for not counting for CIA, U.S. Air Force, secret government programs, the majority of what we're seeing is pollution. So that's why I went to the EPA and I said the following.
is James Lee. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina. I'm a citizen. Um, why is the EPA claiming that six greenhouse gases emitted from jet planes are a threat to human health under the Clean Air Act while doing nothing to address ongoing lawsuits over leaded aviation gasoline or the real health concerns of stakeholders worldwide? Cancer causing heavy metals and fuels and their additives <clears throat> and aviation induced cloudiness. You, the EPA, claim the authority to regulate aviation emissions under the Clean Air Act, a law that should protect us from the aforementioned poisonous pollution. However, the definition of pollution is being perverted to mean climate change gases in what can only be called a violation of the spirit of the law. Air pollution which may reasonably be anticipated to endanger public health or welfare. That's the quote. As you can see by the wording in the Clean Air Act, lead, barium, aluminum, and trade secret toxic chemicals clearly present a greater danger to public health than greenhouse gases, no matter how much climate science you accumulate. Furthermore, material safety data sheets of aviation fuel and their additives almost always contain the same warning, do not dump in water. Yet, raw fuel dumping or burning these chemicals, dangerous chemicals and then dumping them in water is somehow safe. Finally, despite great efforts to find bioaccumulation or biomagnification studies on precipitated aviation pollutants, none seem to exist. The EPA and Obama administration are ignoring the global outrage over the most visible climate change concern from airplanes, cloud creation. Do a search for the word chemtrails on the internet and you will see millions of concerned citizens who look up and wonder what in the world are they spraying. Despite what you may think of the myriad of maladies attributed to these clouds, the global outrage is nonetheless clear. They are right to be worried, and we should all be concerned. The EPA's claim that CO2 is a greater threat to human health than contrails and aviation-induced cloudiness is based on incomplete IPCC data that downplays the effects of contrails on our climate. The IPCC's fourth, fourth assessment of contrail radiative forcing only accounted for linear contrails, meaning any contrail that spreads out and turns into cirrus clouds was not accounted for. How significant is this heat-trapping contrail conundrum? Quote, contrails formed by aircraft can evolve into cirrus clouds indistinguishable from those formed naturally. These spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. Another researcher stated, a single aircraft operating in conditions favorable for persistent contrail formation appears to exert a contrail-induced radiative forcing some 5,000 times greater than the estimates of the average persistent contrail radiative forcing from the entire civil aviation fleet. Why did I lose my place? Although this research has now been incorporated into the IPCC computer models and revised down, in my opinion, these claims highlight gaping holes in climate science. As of 2013, quote, aerosol cloud interactions are the are one of the main uncertainties in climate research. Scientific understanding of how contrails transition into cirrus clouds is severely lacking but rapidly evolving with the latest research showing that cirrus clouds are filled with metal aerosols from human sources. Quote, the big one we found is lead, coming from things like tetraethyl lead in fuels, still used today in light aviation, so that's probably the biggest metal that we find or the most frequent metal that we find, but we find a whole host of different metals, actually. Apparently, small amounts of metal particulates have major effects on cirrus clouds. Quote, it would seem that you would have to change all of the aerosol in the atmosphere very radically to get a big, different on, big effect on the clouds, but because mineral dust and metallic particles are such a small amount of the particulate matter, just a percent or two, it means that you only have to change about a percent or two of the particles to get a big effect on these clouds. The latest research casts doubts on the IPCC's contrail assumptions and requires serious consideration when addressing the real climate change impact of aviation. High altitude metals and cirrus cloud condensation nuclei are likely coming from leaded avgas and jet exhaust. 
contrails or making cirrus clouds and small changes in atmospheric metal have large impacts on cirrus cloud creation. Cirrus clouds trap heat and are likely to have a greater impact, climate change impact than CO2. Finally, aviation-induced cloudiness endangers future growth in solar energy, affects tourism and spending, and is projected to make terrestrial astronomy impossible by 2050. Geoengineering scientists, NASA, NOAA, FAA, USDA, DOE, and international corporate partners are discussing the use of biofuels and sulfur-doped jet fuels for contrail control. This cirrus and cirrus cloud seeding with bismuth, bismuth triiodide to melt these clouds away. The EPA should be directly involved in these discussions. As a result of these recent filings, I, findings, I strongly encourage the EPA to consider expanding the scope of this endangerment to include metal particulates and cloud formation from jet exhaust. If the EPA complies with the spirit of the Clean Air Act, they will protect us from metal aerosols attributed to Alzheimer's, autism, cancer, and a plethora of other debilitating illnesses. If the EPA is truly concerned about aviation-induced climate change, they will regulate the production of contrails and cirrus clouds, which change our climate to a much greater extent than the sum of the six greenhouse gases named in this proposal. Regulating heavy metals and aviation-induced cloudiness will be meaningless without proper verification. Even though ICAO members sign a binding agreement to only use certain chemicals in their gas tanks, we all know agreements and regulations are useless without proper verification. Therefore, I request mandatory, random testing of jet exhaust be immediately implemented. This is the most important step the EPA can, can take to law, do its due diligence to protect us from harmful pollution and get real world data to improve future regulations. Most of the data behind this endangerment finding comes from research in highly controlled environments where vari most variables are known. We need verification of non-ideal situations where fuel fouling, fame contamination, or improper maintenance end in vastly different exhaust particulates than seen in lab settings. To achieve verification, I propose that the EPA randomly attach a trailing probe to both foreign and domestic flights then collect and analyze the results to determine real-world exhaust constituents. Alternatively, ground-based LIDAR observations may be possible over fixed high-traffic areas and prevent possible terrorist attacks using aerosols. Either way you choose, we need verification and protection. In conclusion, the EPA should expand this endangerment to include metal aerosols and cloud creation, create a verification system that includes all aircraft, protects us from aviation pollution, holds violators accountable, and commits to better scientific accuracy for future determinations. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of so many who could not be here. Um, and thank you for listening to the, a layperson's views um, on this subject. While I appreciate the efforts of the Center for Biological Diversity, the Sierra Group, and the Friends of the Earth to get the EPA to hold the aviation industry accountable, the poor people like myself have to live near these airports, under these fuel dumps, and under these clouded skies. I hope that some faith can be restored in our EPA by your action here and now. Tell the ICO, ICAO that they will meet your demands and our demands, not the other way around. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you for all of your comments. Um, second time. So everything I said there has been proven to be 100% true. Um, and like I said, I did my homework before going and I ran it by the debunkers. Not a single one of them could debunk a word I said. And, you know, I, I said at the time, this was 20, August 2015 when this hearing happened, that it would be three years before anybody figured out what the hell I meant by what I was saying. Um, and that's exactly what's happened. And, you know, since then, um, you know, I, you know, obviously before the EPA hearing happened, they tried to talk me into not coming. You can see this on climateviewer.com slash serious clouds matter. Senior uh, policy analyst advisor, Lucy Audet, you know, recorded the phone call where she said, please don't come to the hearing, Jim. Jesus. 
And then I went anyway. And you could see uh, I brought four of my friends, Amanda Bays, um, a.k.a. Madison Star Moon, um, Patrick Roddy, Max Bliss, and Mac, um, Michael Saraceno. So if you want to watch the full video, I only showed my um, testimony just now. Um, you can do that right there or on the um, other page. But here's basically what happened. Um, the hearing was on August 11th, 2015. Uh, by July 25th, uh, 5th, 2016, breaking EPA to limit greenhouse gases from airplanes. So the EPA did decide to go ahead and limit, you know, write some regulations. So this would be the first time in history that the EPA, you know, did something to the airline industry. Uh, less than a week later, the Obama White House releases Federal Alternative Jet Fuel Research and Development Strategy. Ooh, the shutdown begins. September 3rd, 2016, all during the Trump election, China, U.S., and Europe pledge support for Global Aviation Emissions Pact. So they all got together with the ICAO and said... Um, please don't regulate us. We'll clean up our act. September 12th, 2016. About a week later, Greens moved to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. So they threw the lawsuit out. And that's, that's the full story of what happened with the EPA hearing. And then come a full year later, now, non-governmental organizations slam UN Aviation Agency plan for biofuels or biofuels for contrail control. So they, they've decided that they're going to use biofuels to try to fix their contrail conundrum. Um, and that's what the, the doctor I was interviewing from the FAA Cl Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, that was his, you know, profession, was testing biofuels. So that's why we were talking to him. Um, you know, he's a specialist on it. He did the Access flights, um, Access 1 and 2, and now they're doing a third set of flights called ND Max or ECLIF 2. Um, and this is um, the FAA, NASA, and German DLR. And they're testing these alternative aviation fuels or biofuels for contrail control. Um, and that's really, uh, you know, the truth of the matter. They, they want to take control of this situation by, um, you know, geoengineering the jet fuel. And I've, I've documented this well. I'm not going to get into all the details behind it because that could make a whole nother video. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, let me bring up my notes real quick. Where were we? Um, hold on one second. 29.53. All right, so I'm going to bring up one other video real quick. And this is the second interview I had with Dr. Rangasai Halthori. Um, and you might find this pretty fascinating as well. So we good. Hey, hold on. Have Point. you guys ever tested random planes, Dr. Halzori? No, the, this kind of experiment is unique. Um, and this has been like the sec very second one, as, you're, uh, as Jim was saying. Um, this is uh, like Axis 1 and 2. This is this Axis 2. So well-known uh, aviation fuel is burnt. Uh, in these engines, and then we are looking at the exhaust. And uh, as I have mentioned to you before many, many times, uh, we're, I'm not at all familiar with what you mean by chemtrails, because that shows some kind of intentional uh, spraying by... Yeah, that's what we, that's that's, what we believe. That's we what believe we're talking about. And I'm not familiar, and I don't think that's happening without the knowledge of the public. Uh, and uh, here these are all uh, fuels that everybody knows what they are and, uh, can, and I, there is nothing no right. mm -hmm. the difference the difference between John Amanda and myself I don't personally believe that there is an intentional spraying thing going on so for me chemtrails is synonymous with contrails and they are both a pollution problem my concern and what John was stating, John stated that you're not testing just public planes. Here's my concern. 
in a perfect lab setting where you control all the variables, you're going to get somewhat expected results. But if we're talking about, let's give an example of a plane that's based out of India, it's not well maintenance, it's using a different kind of gas, and oh, by the way, the guy at the flight line didn't know how to properly mix all those crazy additives, so he put too much in, or there was water building up in there. There are so many variables in the actual commuter plane industry that could influence contrail production that are not being considered. Um, that That's really my concern, is poor maintenance on old machines using terrible chemicals producing massive you know, cloud plumes. And nobody's looking at it from that perspective. That it's okay, so I think error. your concern, I think your concern um, is a general one, and uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, you're asking whether the ICAO standards, the International Civil Aviation Organization standards, mm -hmm. are, uh, are followed in other countries. For example, you're asking. Well, you know, what guarantee is there that some airlines from some other country will use uh, chemicals or will use the right fuel uh, in these engines that uh, are safe? And, and, and uh, to which I say, you know, the ICAO standards are followed by all the countries. They're all signatories, and they all have to use the same fuel, same kind of uh, burning. The engines are the same, where there's all approved, uh, ICAO approved, and, and so... There is uniformity throughout the world, uh, and if what there is, is a what is the verification nation, for that? What is the uh, yeah, verification? They're all signatories to ICAO. They're all signatories. So they to signed ICAO a piece. Of, so let's be clear. They signed a piece of paper. What is the verification for that? Ronald Reagan said, "Trust but verify." <laughs> How do we? Verify? I'm familiar with that statement, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, uh, and I think that that's a very good uh, 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 way to be uh, sure about the fact that we are all burning proper fuel and environmentally safe and so on. I agree with that. Um, and and they're, they're, what you can say is that, look, uh, these countries are all signatories. They have to abide by the rules. If they don't abide by the rules, then there is a danger that uh, – that those countries will be uh, left out or, or kicked out of ICAO. That's a very big price to pay for a small amount yeah, of Yeah, but uh, we need. have to have some way That's to fine. verify. Yeah. When, when we have I'm sure that, there are uh, mechanisms in place for it, yeah. I'm sure there's there a are mechanism none. in place for it, yeah. There are none, and uh, I'm going to tell you why I know there is none. Because right now, okay. um, mm -hmm. the AGU just had a meeting, um, and right. it was about a geoengineering, and they're having one in January at the Weather Modification Conference in Arizona at Phoenix. Right. At that mm -hmm. meeting, there, there's a paper that's being discussed that says, we cannot detect rogue geoengineering. Similarly, the Wyoming... Who uh, do, you, do you have a paper? Uh, do you have a person name or a paper? Uh, I'm, I'll be interested sure. to know who's saying Give me a second. I'll bring that up right now. Um, mm -hmm. The other one is the Wyoming cloud seeding project that they're doing. Uh, basically, the National Academy of Sciences said cloud seeding doesn't work back in 2003, so they decided to give it another try this year and failed miserably. During that test, also said we don't have the current sensors to be able to tell the difference between natural weather and altered weather. So, if you can't detect rogue geoengineering, and you can't verify cloud seeding experiments because we can't tell the difference between natural weather and unnatural weather, then how could you possibly verify what's in a chemtrail that comes from a commercial Okay, let me ask you, turn the question around to you. Let me let me turn this your question around. I, 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 I am, if there is something like what you're saying is going on, I am also concerned about it. Um, now, let me ask you, what do you propose that in an international arena, what do you propose that the IKO or other organizations should do to prevent rogue nations or rogue entities from uh, intentionally doing harm by burning, uh, let's say, dangerous chemicals in these engines? What, what, first of all, what, that you know, is the $100 million question. <laughs> okay. I, I have so, an answer for so, that. I have an answer okay, for that. Okay, sure. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. First of all, the first step is making scientists like you aware of the problem. 
I believe that compartmentalization has a lot to do with the problem. You are studying your your work. You are a good man. You believe what you're doing is a good thing, and I I respect that. But if you don't okay. see the problems that are occurring in all these other realms, uh, we're never going to be able to deal with that. So that's step one. Um, number two, the paper is called Albedo Variabil Variability Limits Potential Detection of Engineered Increases in Reflected Sunlight. And that was also posted in Nature and Climate Change uh, under Detection Limits of Albedo Changes induces, Induced by Climate Engineering. And he says, quote, in uh, summary, what's the author's all, name, uh, if I may? What's the author's uh, name? First author. I would. Hold on, I'd have to click the link. <laughs> one second. It's in an article. Because, I, read. Uh, I usually follow the author's name. It's much easier for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one, yeah. one second, and I'm going to read the quote. The quote says, "In summary, although very large albedo increases are potentially detectable, interannual albedo variability overwhelms the maximum conceivable increases associated with." Feeding proposed SRM schemes. And what they're stating in there is basically, if somebody were to block the sky out to do geoengineering, we would not be able to tell the difference between that and natural weather. And this okay. was uh, written by, why does it not say their name? Reference. All right, so it says, Tuesday, this paper is being given at the Phoenix Convention Center. They're going to be doing the discussion January 6, 2015, so you'll be able to watch it. Um, Diane J. Seidel from NOAA. Um, -E and then D-I-A-N, -E D -I -A -N, and then S-E-I-D-E-L, Diane Seidel. Okay. Um, okay. So that's going to be at the Weather Modification Conference for the American Meteorological Society in January. And that's, oh, yeah, that, yeah. that is okay. a yeah. monumentally paper. So to go back to your question, what do we do to deal with the problem? The problem is NMOD, the Environmental Modification Prohibition, the, the, the law that said no more weather warfare, you can't modify the weather you know, in somebody else's country. There was never a verification regime built for that. When we banned upper atmospheric nuclear explosions, we came up with the Limited Test Ban Treaty. And that's great. It's a signatory thing. Somebody signs a paper, like you said. The difference is we made a verification regime for it. We put infrasound recorders all over the planet to record when a nuclear explosion goes off so that we know they're not lying. The only yeah. difference is when in written back in the 70s, they never invented a way to tell if somebody's modifying the weather. Between commercial, between aviation producing clouds, which is modifying the weather, and cloud seeding experiments around the globe, which are not publicly available, very little public data on them. We cannot blame climate change for crazy weather and tax the entire world for crazy weather caused by climate change if we don't know who's modifying the weather, you know, the, co the corporations and governments doing it. So we need a verification regime, be it LIDAR, lasers to test chemtrails in the sky. You don't have to fly a plane up there, right? So, uh, yeah, I, look, look uh, weather, mo weather modification is not, I, I was always under the impression that that the folks who are worried about chemtrails are not worried about uh, uh, the local weather modification or the spraying for crops and things like that. Are you guys uh, worried about that now? I'm, I'm worried about it for a totally different reason. It's just that weather modification is one of the constant you know, discussions in the chemtrail community because this is inadvertent weather modification according to the weather modification people. When you go to their conferences, you look up, um, you know, there's one called Stratocumulus Dex, Labs for Inadvertent and Intentional Cloud Seeding. Stratocumulus Dex, Labs for Inadvertent and Intentional Cloud Seeding. And what they're talking about is, specifically, contrails and ship tracks producing clouds that alter the weather. So that is weather modification. It may be inadvertent, but that is weather modification. And these things are not regulated at all. And and, and I'm going to end it there, but I think you see my point. Um, so to recap, Dr. Rangasai Althori says, well, you know, they all signed an agreement. It's a piece of paper. And we all know the people who sign pieces of paper, you know, they're, they're definitely going to follow the rules. And this recording that I just played was before my EPA hearing. 
And I told him exactly what I intended to do, that I intended to, to press for verification, you know, actual testing on these planes to see what's coming out of them. Because I believe that it had a lot to do with metal. Well, that wasn't the last time that I interviewed Dr. Rangasai Halthori. Um, if you'll see, the next article was FAA scientists, we want clouds by day, none by night. And I interviewed Dr. Rangasai Halthori via email where I asked him a series of questions about why Dr. Ulrich Schumann was saying, hey, we want to, you know, make less warming, more cooling contrails, which goes against everything that we've been taught. You know, that this is all unintentional. It's just, you know, water vapor and we want it, you know, it's just an, a, an accident. So if that were the case, then why would he go on to make a statement like we want more clouds by day than by night? And if you scroll through this lengthy article, you'll see that, you know, this is the original um, document. And uh, I have it available over here on Scrib. You can actually go download it yourself and read it. Um, but that's exactly what he went on to say. The FAA's official position is, let's make more clouds by day, none by night, because during the day, they cool the planet, but at night, they trap heat, and that is heating up the planet for a net effect of heating the planet. So that's a serious problem. Um, and, you know, despite what, you know, this jerk is saying, Eric Sorensen, um, there are other meteorologists who do admit to this. Um, I was speaking with Paul Delgado from Fox News. And he said, ever hear of a hazy, hot, and humid? The skies are often milky white in D.C. during the summer. Water vapor is most likely to merge onto atmospheric particulates when relative humidity is high, which helps to make the sky hazy white instead of bright blue. And I said, according to Chuck Long from ESRL's C-Res, that it's ice haze from commercial flights accidentally geoengineering that's creating haze. And I gave him a link, not humidity. Do some homework. And he said, exactly. As I've said before, contrail pollution is a problem, which will probably get worse as air travel continues to increase. Um, and there's the original tweets right there. So, I mean, you know, contrail pollution is a problem, which will probably get worse as air travel increases. And, and that's just the facts, guys. I mean, you can hear how I'm discussing this with the scientists. And, you know, Dr. Rangus A. Hawthorne, he couldn't shoot holes in anything I was saying. Um, the chemtrail debunkers couldn't shoot holes in anything I was saying because you got to learn to speak the language and it's all about slave speak. So just to nail this in the coffin, aluminum, barium, and chemtrails explain just the facts, March 15th, 2015 on climateviewer.com. Um, there's barium and aluminum in chemtrails. This is a fact. This is straight from the IPCC's um, section on metal particles. And they say that metal particles comprising elements such as aluminum, titanium, chromium, iron, nickel, and barium are estimated to be present in the parts per billion per volume at level at nozzle exit planes. And then they, they have two estimates from 1975, which is ridiculous that the IPCC today would be using papers from 1975 um, in and of itself. But as you can see, when you look at what's in the jet fuel, um, although they say not, not detected in Jet A, I have other papers that show it was highly founded in Jet A. And this is JP8 over here and JP5. So 2,100 parts per billion in gasoline, 9,300 parts per billion in diesel fuel. Calcium, another thing David Keith mentioned geoengineering the planet with, calcite. Um, 5,000 parts per billion in JP5, 31,000 parts per billion in JP8. 
So that's why NATO planes, U.S. Air Force planes and NATO are clouding the skies. It's more calcium than aluminum and barium or any of that stuff. As you can see, barium 9 and 38, tiny. Um, but here, all the different metals, strontium 70 and JP5, 351 and JP8. Um, titanium 35 in, in gasoline. Uh, 10,000, uh, 1,056 in diesel fuel. So all of the metal that you ever needed was already in there. They even talk about blending different portions of aluminum nanoparticles in J Trofa biodiesel. So the biofuels, they want to put nanoparticles of aluminum in there. And they say they should be used judiciously because they tend to entrain themselves in human bodies. Ooh, there's a fun one. Barium compounds serve as corrosion and rust inhibitors, detergent, anti-smoke additives, and fuels. And this is from characterization of jet aircraft engine particulates by XPS. So yes, they found barium in the jet fuel. Barium, this is from the Center for Disease Control. Barium comp and compounds are used in oil and gas drilling muds, automotive paint, stabilizers for plastic, case hardening steels, Bricks, towels, lubricating oils, and, wait for it, jet fuel. As well as other various types of pesticides. And that's in Tox Guide for Barium, cask number 7440393. And you can see several other links on that. Effects of barium fuel additive on fuel sulfur level on diesel particulate emissions. By the way, jet fuel is diesel fuel. So yes, barium and aluminum are in there. And I'll also go on to talk about rockets. 304 tons of aluminum oxide per space shuttle launch. Um, dwarfs anything ever coming out of any plane. But that's beside the point. How jets make metal clouds, just the facts. This is a, a recent one, April 19th, 2018. And in this paper, they actually did a test, a real test. And what they said coming out of the planes was... The detected metal compounds were all internally mixed with soot particles. The most abundant metals in the exhaust were chromium, iron, molybdenum, sodium, calcium, and aluminum. Also detected vanadium, barium, cobalt, copper, nickel, lead, magnesium, manganese, silicone, titanium, and zirconium. So when they say condensation, they mean condensating on soot, which is loaded with metals. Considering that some fraction of soot can effectively act as ice nucleating particles, and that a dominant fraction of ice residuals in cirrus clouds contain metal compounds, the presented findings support the assumption that aircraft engine emissions can act as ice nucleating particles. So back to Mr. Sorensen. Chemtrails? Those are chemical trails. They are trails of soot and metal that has water vapor condensating on them. It's all slave speak. Um, the guy's a jackass, and he's not very well informed. Furthermore, um, this is straight from the Indian Space Organization. Black carbon soot from aircraft exhaust is destroying ozone, melting the poles. And what did they say? They said, though airborne black carbon, though airborne black carbon is known to dissipate and settle down in a few months under the influence of rain and wind, and is unlikely to travel upwards of four kilometers. However, a group of scientists, including the Indian Institute of Science and ISRO Vikram Sarabi uh, Space Center, say they now have evidence of such particles existing up to 18 kilometers into the stratosphere, and there are about 10,000 of them in every cubic centimeter. So, given the shape and location of the particles, they argue it could only derive the emissions from aviation fuel, and they pose a problem because these black carbon particles can linger long enough to provide a fertile ground for other chemical reactions that can deplete the ozone layer. Linked to atmospheric chem fizz net, linked to the Hindu Times and India Today, all about this article, how it's affecting their monsoon um, and, the, and the ozone layer. So, to, to summarize... 
soot is loaded with metal. Metal comes out of the soot on its way up to 18 kilometers. Um, this is these are known facts now. So the way that this whole chemtrail contrail phenomenon happens is jet fuel burns incompletely. It burns out soot. Soot is a cloud seed or a cloud condensation nuclei, or as they just referred to it, an ice nucleating particle. That is where the condensation occurs. It occurs on soot. And soot can self-levitate. David Keith even said so, top geoengineer. Photophoretic levitation of carbon black soot. And it's proved to be true because they found soot at 18 kilometers in the sky. So, planes here in the troposphere, soot comes out, goes all the way up into the stratosphere, metals come off of the soot, make clouds, and guess what the soot is wrapped in? Sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide. So, that is planes doing stratospheric sulfur injection, or stratospheric aerosol injection, or solar radiation management so this is geoengineering it's what everybody said it was it is chemical trails coming from planes it is metal particles coming from planes it is soot coming from planes screwing up the whole damn planet um and i promised i'd mention it you know the secret side of things in my article titled it's time for the anti-geoengineering community to unite um, you know, I give hell to Russ Tanner, who basically said, you know, that I follow the EPA propaganda, even though I'm the one who went to the EPA and gave them hell, saying that what they were saying was propaganda. Um, and you can see all of that there about Russ Tanner, but we're going to skip past all that because it really doesn't matter. CIA weather warfare, um, Henry Kissinger, the CIA and weather warfare link. Operation Popeye Motor Pool and uh, Weather Warfare over Vietnam, which was done by Henry Kissinger and the CIA. CIA Project Nile Blue, rain embargo on Cuban sugar crops. Both of these are at weathermodificationhistory.com. CIA, CIA, CIA. The CIA, Cloud Seeding Chemtrails and Rogue Geoengineering. Read that one. The CIA, Weather Warfare and Climate Terrorism. Read that one. CIA backs $630,000 scientific study on controlling the global climate. Article. CIA Director Brennan speaks to, at the Council on Foreign Relations supporting geoengineering. Read that one. The CIA's Secret Airlines. And you can see this is from their reading room for FOIA's Clandestine Services History of Civil Air Transport. Another CIA FOIA, Civil Air Transport, Air America, U.S. Government Air, Secret Airline Janet, which stands for Just Another Non-Existent Terminal, Janet Airlines, where white unmarked planes, which are run by the CIA, are flying around and guess what i hear from the chemtrail community all the time the planes that are spraying over my house are white unmarked planes so both can occur yes i've been talking about pollution this entire time but do i believe chemtrails are a possibility as well a secret government program yes because it happened in the past it will happen again it is likely happening now um rendition project flights secret flights more secret flights and links and links and links. 27 years later, CIA pilot tells of using secret Costa Rican airstrip to traffic guns and cocaine. So, dear gatekeepers, I will not be silent. This is my full story on the chemtrail phenomena. You can read most of this at climateviewer.com slash cirrus clouds matter. Um, and go through the fact where I'll show you the difference between solar radiation management, earth radiation management, all of these quotes about less warming, more cooling contrails. We would like more contrails by day, none by night, Dr. Angus I. Althori, and how they want to do 
cirrus cloud seeding to melt these clouds away at nighttime so that they will cool the planet but cool um continue making clouds by day to heat the you know to cool the planet so this is no longer a conspiracy all the facts you need you can go get them at climateviewer.com slash cirrus clouds matter i will be putting this video up on youtube and writing all of the references from this video in an article it will be linked on there but as i said before and i'll say it again this is all about high level descriptors in slave speak and chemtrails persistent contrails spreading contrails contrail cirrus contrail induced cirrus contrail induced cloudiness aviation induced cloudiness aviation induced cirrus induced cirrus cloudiness i got all of those terms from google scholar they are all referring to the exact same damn thing that once a plane makes a cloud and it fans out it is no longer neither a chemtrail nor contrail it's a cirrus cloud but that is an artificial cloud so i hope that you guys will um, make sure that mr Sorensen watches this video maybe he'll get a little education i hope this video has been educational for you i know that it's been quite a lengthy video um but you know this is a very complicated topic and not very many people know you know the full scope of this problem that's why i set out to you know try to show this in this video tonight in addition, I will take those three interviews from um, Dr. Angus I. Althori. They've been deleted from the internet. I'm going to re-edit them together and I will upload them to my YouTube channel as well. So you can hear the entire interviews yourself because there's way more than I played for you tonight. Um, and I'll edit that together with the EPA hearing all into one video. So I hope that people will understand that Part of what we're seeing is pollution. Part of what we're seeing is secret government and military actions. But the most effective way to deal with scientists when talking about this is to refer to it as pollution. And it's very simple. Tell them, I don't like planes making clouds. I don't like planes blocking out the sun. I wish you would do something about that. Um, and try to use as low level a describing word as possible because once you use that chemtrail word that c word they're going to take what you're saying and throw it into a box and they're going to say oh this person believes that you know the government's trying to kill everybody on the planet you're a lunatic i don't need to listen to anything else you have to say if you say geoengineering, it's all geoengineering. They'll say, oh, that's just a proposal. Hasn't happened. Isn't happening. Even though Chuck Long from Noah Ceres, um said that it's accidental geoengineering. Um, so at the end of the day, use the simplest terminology you can when discussing this with people. And then walk them baby steps to the facts. Because the stuff I'm talking about in this video is very high level um and you know most of my colleagues in the chemtrail community they don't even get this so i understand that there is a very you know small portion of people who do understand this and you know that's why i continue to do what i'm doing because it's important that you know we we really get the word out there and that you know but just remember this, that even though it's only a small portion of us that actually see the big picture and understand what's going on, that it's about soot and metal and making clouds, and that's how they're getting the, the, the sulfur into the stratosphere and geoengineering, that never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And you are that group of small, dedicated individuals. Um, and I hope that you guys will spread this message. I hope that you'll continue to support my work on climateviewer.com. Um, and, you know, watch some of these videos. It's pretty funny stuff. Because the meteorologists, they're just weather jockeys. And they read what the, you know, Raytheon AWIPS2 program tells them to say on the screen. And, you know, whenever you see 
guys like this trying to instigate um, doing clickbait videos where you know they're talking out of their butt um, just know that they're doing this you know for clicks I mean obviously WQAD supports this kind of action this kind of silliness out of someone who's supposed to be a professional um, but you know to from me to Eric Sorensen I'll gladly debate you any day um, I double dog dare you to debate me I've said this to Fox News De um, you know Delgado and um, surfing weatherman and a whole bunch of other meteorologists they're not gonna debate it the reason why is because they get their ass whooped but you can do some of that whooping yourself by learning this material and that's what the purpose of this video is I hope that you will spread it around learn the material and uh, share you know share it with other people because information is power and with great power comes great responsibility so I ask that you use this information to attack ideas not people love you mean it if this video resonates with you leave me a comment because I love hearing from y'all first time here be sure to subscribe and click the bell the bell doesn't always work so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter remember it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.